My name is Will Carpenter. I had my career directly from graduate school to Monsanto Company here in St. Louis. Uh, most of my work in Monsanto was in agricultural chemicals, looking for new ones, carrying out the synthesis program, testing the new products, going through the procedures for regulatory approval. I also was, for four years, was corporate director for environmental issues. Nearly everything we did was a team effort. The research that we used ranged from analytical procedures in which we could test for the metabolites and the product themselves in the soil, in the water, in plants, uh, uh, at extremely low levels. By the time I left, we were testing uh, down in the small fragments of a part per billion. And uh, we also learned how to uh, use it in the soil, how to find out its mechanism. So there were a wide range of, uh, of technologies. We used a number of different research groups to do this. We had an analytical procedures. We had a process group that studied the chemistry of how to make this. We had a formulations group about how to make it so that the farmer can use it. We had uh, uh, metabolism groups that found out exactly how it was broken down in the soil, water, etc. And uh, analytical procedures to find out how to do it. The major thrust were would place uh, nuclear weapons, chemical weapons, biological weapons, into a category called weapons of mass destruction. In 78, the United Nations, who was also working on how to ban and clean up the chemical weapon, the nuclear weapons thing, they decided it was time to reinforce a treaty to ban chemical weapons. Uh, and that issue really started working in the United Nations in 1978, uh, the federal government, the State Department asked the chemical industry to supply a person that would be a resource to the various uh, parts of the federal government involved in this, Department of Defense, Department of State, uh, Interior, Energy, FBI, CIA, all of those. Uh, and this organization accounted for about 98% of all the chemicals made in the U.S. and we would be somewhere. At any rate, I ended up with the job in 78 and spent the next 25 years uh, working on that. First of all, to obtain a treaty, uh, then working with the State Department to get it ratified through the U.S. Senate. And then finally, I was uh, the State Department we said in the treaty that the organization would have a science advisory committee of 20 people from 20 different countries. I was the first U.S. representative uh, in that science advisory committee. With the background being that this whole treaty is, is very complicated and the science has to be updated constantly. If the treaty organization falls behind, then it leaves it wide open for the bad men and women to do things. So we created a science advisory committee to make sure that the science is up to date, correct, and useful. I would bet that the amount of science literature being produced on an annual basis today in the United States is at least a thousand times greater than it was in 1858 in every subject conceivable to man, there's scientific research going on. Uh, I've read many times that the science, uh, the science progress is almost doubling every four or five years. Uh, if I tried to find a job now with the science that I had when I joined Monsanto, I was 
a very good scientist on the leading edge. I would starve to death. I would be as obsolete as the dinosaurs uh, with, with what I knew then versus what I need to know now. And uh, if the person who got his degree or her degree five years ago would almost have to say the same thing.